because we want to make sure that we produce a country of entrepreneurial innovation. We need more businesses to catch up by creating more value, but all of this value has to be created in an inclusive way. Don't you all agree? Yeah. Then we can rise up to the full potential that our country has long deserved and we are still working on very hard. So now it's my pleasure, and I think we will do this one at a time. We have three wonderful resource persons uh, to speak to us on our theme so that we, all of us can be pointing at the same north. So it's my special privilege to introduce our first distinguished speaker for this morning's event. Our first speaker is Ms. Kingai Montiveros Malvar. Kingai? Is Kingai here? Oh, there is Kingai right over there. She is the first Vice President and Chief Reputation and Sustainability Officer of the Avoidus Group. Let's give her a round of applause while I finish the introduction and as she proceeds here, near the mic. Where she oversees the group's brands, corporate communications, media and sustainability programs. So that she has a very broad portfolio. She leads the company's sustainability agenda and redefines the one new appointed sustainability framework unifying the group's strategic business units in addressing ESG issues. Ginga is also the lead of the private sector champions prosperity pillar of the United Nations Global Compact Network Philippines, which uh, Vicky Tan spoke on earlier. So let's welcome Ginga to the podium. Once again, our first speaker, Ginga on Develops. Thank you very much, Professor Ben, and good morning to everyone. So, um, before I start our very short presentation today, siguro tong booking ko lang yung sinabi ni Professor Ben about the unit, you know, all pointing in the same direction or all headed towards the same direction. And, you know, when we think about ESG and sustainability, that's also exactly it. Because I believe that as organizations, whether we are in the private or public sector, when we talk about ESG and sustainability, we're really talking about the same unified goals. Inclusivity, prosperity, sustainability, decarbonization, and, and such. We just go about it probably in our own way. We have our own approaches, our own strategy, our own programmatic initiatives. But at the end of the day, we're actually all moving towards the same direction. So if things look a little bit chaotic, chaotic sometimes um, around us. Um, I think as sustainability and CSR practitioners, we can always, you know, go back to the fact that at the end of the day, we're all really moving towards, you know, one direction. Okay, so um, I've been asked today to talk a little about our role as a private sector organization in ESG integration for MSME development. So um, I'll probably start off by telling you a bit about who we are. I'm not sure how familiar all of you are with um, the Avoidance Group. And you know, there are a lot of changes that are happening in our organization as well as in the ecosystems where we um, thrive in. Um, we started really way back, no? maybe like the family, Avoidance family has been in the Philippines for over 200 years. And as a business, we've been here in the Philippines for over 150 years, right? Um, we have business verticals in power, in banking and financial services. Um, in the food group, which also includes a regional footprint, so we do have operations in different Southeast Asian countries, um, including China. Um, and um, we're also in, of course, land development, um, infrastructure. We are involved in um, some of the key PPP projects that are currently ongoing in the country, um, which, as we all know, and just again to Professor Ben's point earlier about so I think infrastructure or the lack of thereof also has something to do with that, right? So we are working in strategic collaboration with other private sector companies to help the country in terms of infrastructure. Um, and then we have a very new uh, business unit called Avoidance Data Innovation, which is really our foray into data science, artificial intelligence, and all these new and emerging tech. And at the end of the day, it's again really meant to help not just the Avoidance Group um, as a company, but I think more importantly, um, the Philippines and society at large by using AI and data so that we can come up with better solutions um, for everyone. And I think what's remarkable or exciting now about 
the appointees group is we are on this journey which we call the Great Transformation. So it's really all about um, transforming ourselves. It's a very, very old uh, company, a very, very old conglomerate into an um, organization where um, our team members have more of a startup mindset. So we are undergoing as well a cultural revolution within the organization and really helping our, ourselves, our own team members, to be better at what we do, to do things faster, to do things more collaboratively um, you know, with each other, um, and to use more of tech um, and innovation and creativity to come up with much better solutions, products and services for our stakeholders. And um, it's a three to five year journey that um, we started about a year ago, led by our Aboitis Group CEO, Sabine Aboitis. And at the end of the day, we really want to transform ourselves into the Philippines' first conglomerate. And being a conglomerate is really not just about using tech and, and innovation and all these emerging technologies to tech up our core businesses, right? It's also about incubating big business ideas, radical ideas, perhaps game-changing ideas, um, using, again, tech and innovation. And hopefully these ideas are actually incubated into new businesses and growth areas, which not only benefit a single organization, but more importantly, the country as a whole. And when we also talk about being a conglomerate, it also means that even in our own approach to sustainability and CSR, which we have been doing for you know, um, more than 100 years already in the Philippines, it also means that we need to transform and change the way that we approach sustainability, um, ESG, and CSR. It means that we have to deepen our understanding and our role and appreciation of that role that we play um, in society. And it also means that we want to build capacity as well within our own team members so that they are able to apply more of technology in the different solutions that we're doing, like for example, in the Boynton's Foundation, and I'll talk about that a little more. Okay, so um, I touched already a bit about our sustainability, and we currently have a framework that's really about moving from strategy to synergy, and how this is actually encompassing an entire blueprint across the Aboitis group about the actions that we are taking as an organization. And it's focused on ESNG, where we have different uh, programmatic initiatives that address specific problems, whether it's the, on the environmental side, on the social impact side, of course, which is really our biggest focus for the Aboitis group, as well as on um, good governance, um, you know, making sure that we continue to grow sustainably um, through the years. So I suppose as far as social is concerned, it's really focused um, you know, our efforts on creating value for our stakeholders, um, which means we want to get into more collaborative partnerships. That is why we're also very active in local consortia, like the GCFP. I'm sure many of you heard Vicky uh, talk about this um, earlier. Um, on the panel, you know, we also have with us Sharon, who works with us in GCNP. So we really want to form more of these partnerships and collaboration, which, even though we are doing different things, again, it really goes back to the same unified goal of inclusivity, um, especially for the MSMEs that are, are within our value chain. And then, of course, since we do, sorry, can we go back? Since we do understand and we know um, and we are aware that we do have um, an impact on the environment in terms of our business operations, we're also very conscious about um, reporting or disclosing such information. And then I think more importantly really is also the targets that we've set as an organization so that we can continue to minimize that impact and then more importantly create solutions that really help us as a business decarbonize and then also, you know, to inspire and advocate for decarbonization across the industries, um, you know, that we're in. Okay. Um, okay, so we have um, a lot of uh, sustainability programs that are currently ongoing across the Aboitis group. We've implemented them, um, you know, aimed at addressing envy, social, as well as governance um, concerns. And it's really designed to drive positive impact and contribute to sustainable development. We want to continue to collaborate with all our stakeholders to take an even more deliberate step in contributing to the 2030 agenda of the SDGs and align our initiatives to the agreements and declarations outlined in Glasgow's um, COP26. And as we all know, COP28 is just around the corner, right? So we'll need to see as well the progress that still needs to be made 
especially perhaps in areas like transition financing, which is you know is so critical, especially for economies like the Philippines. Um, we also want to continuously seek opportunities to innovate, collaborate, and drive positive change um, in line with our commitments to sustainable development. Um, and that's really through integrating ESG considerations into all our programs. It's really our way of ensuring that as we strive to create long-term value, we're doing it in the most sustainable approach possible, which means we want to promote um, social progress, so the well-being, again, of people and communities and stakeholders that are in and around our business uh, operation areas. We want to protect the environment. We want to preserve it for the long time. Long term, we want to preserve it for generations to come. And of course, we really continue to uphold very strong governance practices. In fact, when people um, ask me what's probably one of the first things you can do as an organization if you're starting your ESG journey, I always tell them, please look at your governance structure because it's having a strong governance that really allows you to put a, you know, a structure or a plan in place on how you're going to go about your ESG journey. So that's really important. Okay, so our enterprise development is really quickly, um, it's really a journey um, that we've taken, which um, you know we hope to uh, enable and extend support to our MSMEs, especially um, those that were badly hit because of the COVID pandemic. We recognize that there are many underprivileged indiv individuals who aren't able to reach their full potential for development as productive members of society due to the lack of many things like educational attainment, a lack of skills, development, access to financial services and market linkages. So our enterprise development program as one of the major programs of our Avoidis Foundation and Avoidis Group is really aimed to provide opportunities for sustainable livelihood and enterprises that are resilient in the long term and can hopefully generate jobs and create more entrepreneurs. So again, going back to the point of Professor Ben about how the future of the Philippines really needs more entrepreneurs. That we also need more data scientists, we need more engineers, we need people that can actually help design solutions for the future. We also recognize that our own country's economic development is dependent on the success of businesses, most especially cooperatives and MSMEs. We all know that 99% of businesses registered in the Philippines are MSMEs. Before the pandemic uh, struck, they accounted for about 60-65% of employment. So they are a force to reckon with. They are a force also that needs a lot of help and support now. So one of our objectives is to help co-create with others, partners, um, more resilient, more empowered, and sustainable communities. And we are cognizant of the fact that it is vital, vital for the business to create meaningful partnerships and engagement with MSMEs and cooperatives, especially those that are within our value chain. Okay, next slide. So um, our enterprise development approach focuses on providing end-to-end um, um, cost-efficient interventions for community-based enterprises. So we're talking about capacity building training, livelihood development, which really increases supply chain inclusiveness, um, access to finance, meaning the availability and affordability of financial services, as well as enhancing digital capabilities through our Biahing Digiscarte. And I keep looking at Jero here in front, who's really our champion for Biahing Digiscarte in the Foundation. Um, so when we talk about some examples that we're already doing, so um, let's say an MSME develop, development and inclusivity in our value chain. So I always like to refer to the example of our food group or Pelmico, where the idea of the yellow corn project, which is really a livelihood development project, was meant to directly source raw materials from our local farmers' cooperatives in an effort to secure a portion of our own corn requirements for our feed milling businesses. It facilitated learning sessions to help develop the financial, entrepreneurial, and managerial competencies of the farmers in order to improve their overall business acumen and overall business management. In terms of inclusive financing, I probably point to an example um, where we have a partnership with CARD. Um, um, and this is about a partnership that you know helps community-based cooperatives and associations um, in providing them more uh, ready access to low-cost capital and at the same time build the capacity of these organizations and MSMEs to better manage their business or um, operations, especially on the financial side as we know that's 
almost always the weak part, right, that we encounter when we talk about MSMEs and cooperatives. And then in terms of helping to build a, you know, a stronger sustainability mindset in MSMEs, so an example would be our Biahin Discarding Program, which is the mentoring program of the Appointees Foundation. Um, it starts off really with the digital transformation of our cooperatives and MSME partners, partners so that they can take advantage of emerging opportunities in e-commerce. Um, we assist cooperatives and MSMEs to utilize digital um, technology for their businesses, especially uh, banking transactions, member transactions, e-commerce, and e-learning. Next slide. Okay, so since we launched Biahin Digiscarte in 2021, we've had really meaningful partnerships and collaborations with various organizations that help create productive, innovative, and income-generating venues for our partner co-ops and MSMEs nationwide. Um, if you look at some of the numbers at the bottom of the slide, which is really the outcome and impact of this ongoing journey. So we, we really just got started. Um, so this is something that we want to keep pushing and that we want to keep scaling through the years. So if you look at some of the numbers, we've actually trained about 9,365 MSMEs through the current program. Um, we've been able to help increase their average monthly income to about 30,000 pesos a month. And we've also helped to bank 887 previously unbanked beneficiaries, which means they have a lot of access now. Um, to online um, digital banking services, which as we know is really you know, a convenience probably that we take for granted, but for our micro-entrepreneurs, it's really a game changer for them. So we want to continue this, um, this program and really walk the MSMEs through this journey and hopefully we're able to scale again um, nationwide in partnership with other companies. Next slide, please. Okay, so I keep referring back to partnerships, collaboration, and synergies, which is really part, again, of a unified pathway for the entire country in terms of ESG and sustainability. Um, and we are really very much dedicated to really nurturing these partnerships that enable MSMEs and cooperatives through innovation and technology. Um, we know that digital solutions have a great transformative power. We want to continue actively collaborating with government agencies and associations, industry associations, and tech partners to create a more supportive and robust ecosystem for MSMEs. Um, through the partnerships, um, we want to continue providing MSMEs and co-ops with access to digital platforms, to tools and training programs that really help to enhance their digital literacy, um, helping them to streamline their operations and also expand their market reach. And by joining forces with other stakeholders, um, together, in collaboration and synergy, we're able to amplify our impact that empowers MSMEs and co-ops in the long run. So allow me also to share, and I'm sure Vicky spoke about this a little bit earlier, we are a partner in the Global Compact Network Philippines, or the GCNP. Um, Sharon, uh, as I mentioned, is also with us. And we are really focused on MSME development. So we have three pillars, people, plan, and prosperity. Um, so we're working closely with um, different stakeholders on the programmatic initiatives. And um, we want to leverage on innovation. We want to leverage on tech. Um, and uh, we hope to continue playing a significant role in fostering the growth and sustainability of MSMEs um, for the long run. We believe that this will help to drive the economic progress that you know, has been eluding us for several decades now. But hopefully, Philippines, if we get our act together, I'm sure we'll get there. So in closing, i just like to, uh, I suppose, reinforce or reiterate that really collective action, I think, is the way to go, um, all moving towards the same direction with a common goal, even if we have our different strategies and approaches. And through a more collaborative synergy um, in the ecosystem, stakeholders all working together, we're really able to scale up all these tested business cases that we have, not just in a Boydis group, but every single organization that's represented in this room, so that we can create more meaningful and more impact impactful approaches to MSME development. I guess that's it. Thank you. So if you need more information, we do have a micro site for our sustainability activities. Thank you so much, Ingay. Now, Ingay, unfortunately, will not be able to join us for the open forum, right? So she is very regretful, regretful, 
but she's open to questions which you can email to our organized organizers which we will curate and forward to her right so therefore we have to do the giving of the token of uh, appreciation kind of ahead of time so let me call on stage uh, Jero Torres the Enterprise Development Committee Chair of the LCL and also manager of Enterprise Development 